Hi, I'm Laura with Rethunk Junk by Laura, and this is our Thursdays at 3 live Facebook videos where we talk about the paint, show you a project, help you out, answer questions. It's not the ho-ho-ho series anymore because Christmas is over. Happy New Year. Hope your Christmas and your holidays were wonderful. Today we are going to talk about painting laminate furniture. It does not have to be real wood for the paint to stick and for you to transform a piece and for it to be something wonderful. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, and the supplies you're going to need are prep. That's our product that cleans the piece really, really well, gets it ready for the paint to adhere, and I'll talk a little bit about that while we prep. Paint, whatever color you want, and a brush, obviously. Glaze, that's optional. We're actually not going to glaze today because we're going to try and fit a bunch in, and I don't want you to get bored. We're going to do a whole nother tutorial just on glazing, another Thursday at 3. And then tough top or flat top to seal the piece, and we'll talk about that when we get to it because we are going to do that. So here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to be moving around, and I have told Katie, no shots of my rear end. No shots that are unflattering. Just move with me, work with me, <laughs> um, Photoshop while we're doing it. So one of the things we're going to do today is um, this desk right here. And I did half of it so you could see what it's going to look like, but I left half so you could see um, what it started as. And these pieces are easy pieces to find. Um, this is, I think, a solder piece. It's one of those that just kind of goes together with an Allen wrench. <coughs> Nothing wood about it. So the first thing we're going to do is, well, actually, the first thing we're going to do is going to take the hardware off, which will only take a second, but I want you to see that you can change the hardware out, too, and that makes a huge difference when you're working on a piece. That side actually has a couple drawers, but I did this side because then it's kind of like a cabinet door, so I can show you some things that are, oh, like you need a close-up of this. Well, you can say the wood better. Oh, well, that's true. Well, right. Not the wood, the whatever that is. Sorry. I can't complain or you'll get a shot in my butt. I gotta be <laughs> nice to you. Okay, put the hardware off. And two hardware off. And we won't be using those again, so we're gonna move them up to the side. So, first thing we're gonna do now that we've got the hardware off is we're going to. We're gonna prep the piece. The prep cleans it. Usually a piece like this you found at a thrift store or you've had it home forever and you've cleaned it. And whoever took it to the thrift store cleaned it. Um, and it's just got stuff you can't even see on it. Thanks, Tom. Was his arm in the video, Katie? I actually don't think so. Oh, he's good. <laughs> okay. I was going to just do totally half. And then I realized I'd be crawling around on the floor trying to get that. And that would definitely create some kind of butt shot. So we went without doing that. Alright, um, if you're in an area, like Georgia, <coughs> where you can let the prep sit for a couple minutes, do that. It kind of works its magic, does its thing. If you're in Utah or somewhere where there's no humidity, it will dry immediately, so don't really let it sit. So, that's about all you need to do. And it looked when we started like the piece was pretty clean. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, so it looked like it was a clean piece when we started. It gets some stuff off, and it's funny if you do it and um, look carefully and stand in the right light and squint your eyes and pretend to make believe. Just kidding. You can actually see a difference in the shine on a lot of pieces if I prep half of them. Okay, so we have prepped it, and I meant to leave an area unprepped. Dang it! Because I was going to show you what happens when you don't prep. Because this one's a good example of what happens when you don't prep. All right. Once you have prepped, you're ready to slap the paint on. So that's what we're going to do next. And I like to put the paint on and just have... Okay, see, there we go. That's... If I put a bunch on it, then I don't have to keep dipping. I can just kind of spread around what I've got. I did the keyboard tray. And we're going to do the top a different color, too. So I'm just putting the first coat on. Whoops. We need some prep, Tom. <laughs> Luckily, the carpet here is pretty trashed anyway. But we should get that up. This was too heavy to lift and put on a tarp. Whoops. But probably we should have one. <laughs> We can get it up. The prep's fabulous for that. If you have a spill, 
The so prep will help <laughs> clean it up. <laughs> so, does anybody grab, grab prep so I can get it up? We'll do it later. No, I'm good for it. No, it's okay. That's called, I don't want to get a tarp. <laughs> now I got to the bottom. Okay, see how if I've got it on here, then I can just kind of spread it around. I don't have to keep dipping a million times. Now, a lot of times, we went quick today. A lot of times if I have, see how it looks like there are some areas where it's repelling the paint? If I've got to look like that, that can sometimes mean you didn't prep good enough. You didn't let it sit on there long enough, you didn't spray enough, whatever. So we'll see what happens. I'm thinking, being the professional that I am, it's not gonna be a big deal. But if you notice that and you know you're working with a piece that's not real wood and is real slick and all that kind of jazz, go back and prep again. All right, now, we're gonna turn the fan on because it's tremendous. Actually, I'm gonna do the top and then we'll turn the fan on the whole thing. So we'll do the top and I'll talk about what I'm doing on the top and then we'll turn the fan on because it makes a huge difference to have a fan on for dry time and I'll just talk over the fan. So the top. Talk about it. I'll go ahead and turn it on that low. The yeah, low turn it on medium. Yeah. I can talk about I mean <laughs> low as in aim down. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Miss mm, Morris is in the middle of a project that is laminate. Oh, yay. How's it going? Well, she can answer. How's it going? <laughs> okay, so for the top, here's what we're going to do. Oops, sorry. Yep, it's all good. Just keep going. This is a, we didn't feel that's okay. It's in a bottle, it's okay. Okay, this is one of those things where if I kind of slap it on, then I can spread it out. I went ahead, because I knew I was edging the edge a little bit different, I went ahead and put um, some of the seaside on this edge right here. I'll get linen on it. But I did that hopefully to save time so that we can get it finished without me having to do the two coats on there on a video. So, because one of the things... She said so far it's going wonderfully. Oh, good, good. <laughs> and if it wasn't, then that would not be the time to announce that. Just kidding. You did ask the question. I did ask the question. I'm thrilled it's going wonderfully. Okay, so I'm spreading it out now because I got a bunch on here. Normally, like I say, I wouldn't already have seaside on that one edge, so you wouldn't have to be very careful at all. Um, so I'm going to put it all over the outside first, and then I'll fill in. Just because I'm not a fan of, like I've said a thousand times already, dipping my brush a hundred times. Okay, sorry. Got to yeah, you're not facing the camera. Sorry. I'll talk loud. Okay, so once you get... The paint all over. The paint all over. On the top of a piece, on the on something else. You saw when I did the drawers, I wasn't real careful there with that door. But on the top of a piece, it is your focal point. So once you're done, okay, I got paint everywhere. Now I'm going to want to go back and make sure I go side to side so I don't have any brush strokes. If I'm doing it right, I will have a little drip on the edge because I'm going all the way off. I'm not going right to here. I'm going all the way off on the edge so that it completely covers and everything's the same direction and everything smoothed out and there aren't any grips. She said she prepped twice to be sure it's stuck. Oh, she did it right. She's just got talent <laughs> without even listening to any explanations. Are you using cotton or cloud on the top? This is linen. Linen? Yep. Um, <laughs> yes. Why do you leave the drawers closed when painting? Some people take those off. Does that make it easier? You can. What? Um, this, I would have had to take the hinges off and everything, and like when I've talked about kitchen cabinets, they never go back on the same. They just never <laughs> put the lights. Dad. Oh, you got that? <laughs> there you go. Y'all will want to go back and, and screenshot that. <laughs> Katie, you're fired. So oh, I you, That's worse. You, I won't say that. You'll want to, um, it just, they never go on the same. And plus, it's a whole lot of trouble. Plus, I'm where are you going to put them on? I am talking. <laughs> so, don't light me. Quit. So, it's easier for me to leave them on. And like I'm saying with kitchen cabinets, oh my stars. You get me Family I'm business is <laughs> so fun. I told you I was going to be moving around on this one. I'm about to get you again when I pan back to the... Okay, to so... This will be his workout, <laughs> running back and forth. You're going to have the second roll. Okay, so... In a minute you can need to put it so it drives the whole thing. So I've got that first coat on. Let's pretend it was a kitchen cabinet. Then I'm going to open the door. Is it a good idea to use your paint on kitchen cabinets? 
Yes, it's a great idea. I've done it. Lots of people have done it. It's absolutely beautiful. Much more inexpensive than replacing or resurfacing or anything like that. Okay? And then you just come in and get whatever whatever you miss. Like if I was doing kitchen cabinets, this little section right here. If you're, um, if you're real anal, just kidding. Or you have a spirit of excellence, just kidding. You can put a piece of tape down so that that's a nice straight edge down there. This is just for my space. Nobody else is ever going to be in here. I'm not stressed about it. I usually am working so very hard that I don't even notice what's inside the cabinets anyway. <laughs> so, um, but it's just so much easier than taking them off. So, as you can see from the fan, look, we're already dry. That's why you turn a fan on. Isn't that fabulous? There should be hearts and likes and wows and <laughs> oohs. Are people saying all that stuff? Because that's pretty amazing that that would already be dry. Okay? Um, I'm going to put a second coat on this. Tom, will you angle the fan so that it gets the top of it? Yeah. And I'm going to do a second coat on this cabinet because there are a couple places where it is not totally dry. And I want to show you what happens if you're painting your second coat too soon. Because if somebody asks the question, the fan's going to have to go up and over my rear end. That's going to be miraculous. Okay. Did you just say that? Did you hear what he just said? <laughs> I'm not sure the cord's that long. That's a really great way to start the new year. Okay, so I'm going over it. This coat, my second coat, I want a little bit more paint because I want this to be my last coat. So I'm using a little bit more paint than I did before, but I don't want drips. And if I get, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I have a spot that messes up so I can talk to you about that. But, well, well, but I'm so miraculous, I probably won't. So let's see what happens here. Okay, see I'm using a little bit more paint this time, but I'm making sure it's not dripping. I just tuned in. Did you use anything other than prep to begin with? No, I did not. Prep is miraculous and that is all I used. And I love it when you guys ask questions. It's a whole lot easier than me trying to interact with my husband and children and chat. Okay. Okay, see it's going, sadly enough, it's going perfectly. So. <laughs> Oh wait, here, okay, I'll make a spot. Let me just show you, let me, let me finish this and then I'll show you what happens. One, no, it's not, no, it's not the paint messing up, it's user error, and I just wanna explain when, when people call and have questions. Okay, one of the problems you have is, you'll look at this cabinet and think to yourself, okay, that's not perfect, I need to get that perfect right there, I need to get it perfect right here. Oh, right there, there's some spot, well, dang. Okay, right here. Okay, see, I want that to be perfect. Cool. Look at the more I work with it to try and get it to be perfect, the more I have issues. So, leave it alone. Let it dry. When I come back, I can cover that. But the more I mess around with it, once you get that second coat on, see, the more I'm, look right in here. I just decided, oh, let me touch that up. Go for it, Tom. This will be like a voice from the heavens, just coming down from on high. You have to talk loud. Just because the top of paint sounds. Can you guys hear, Tom? Just because the top of paint feels dry, it is dry, but that does not mean it has fully cured and the curing is what adheres it um, really well to the piece. So when you're working on it like this one where we painted it four or oh. five minutes ago and we're already putting a second coat on, it's dry and it'll put the second coat on, but it needs a little bit to cure. So don't panic if you if you if it does that. Alright, so message there, don't overwork it when you're doing this. Give it that. I need better lights on the top of this. What? Is it looking bad? Well, that's only yeah. our first coat. No, it's not the that it's looking bad. It's that it gets really dark. Oh, oh that's so oh, much I'm better. Sorry. All right, great. Okay, okay. Move, let, let's move over to this piece while this one's drying. I wanted to show you something. Don't move over here. We're moving over there. Okay. Okay. So um, this piece you used seaside on the bottom of this. Yes, right? it is and seaside on the top. Yes. And. Can you find your paint in North, Al North Alabama? Yes. Tell them to um, text us, call us, or email us, and we will send them the post location. Okay. Or you can check out our website, www.refundjokebylar.com. Ooh, how fast did I say that? That was awesome. And there's a spot <laughs> called Store Locator. Plug in your zip code, and it'll tell you the nearest store. If there's not a store near you, open one. <laughs> and if you don't <laughs> want to do that, you can always order online. We ship same day on online orders. Okay, this piece over here... This is the before. Can you see that or is the light weird? No, I can actually see that. Okay. Well. All right. That's the before. Totally laminate. Put together with an Allen wrench. Nothing real about it. Ready for the after? Ta -da! Ta -da. That's our after. Okay. Just so you know, that's definitely the piece. Can you get a shot of the side? I left this side unpainted. 
Yeah. Okay. It had, we did this one, um, sandstone and linen. It had these little poles, which looked a little too modern for me. So when we finished, I just drilled some holes and put a knob on. Um, and you see here, there's three cabinets. Whoops. There are three cabinets. When I got done, I had a knob here and a knob here. Are you focusing, Kate? I'm focusing. Okay. A knob to. here and a knob <laughs> here and a knob here. But it didn't look balanced, so I put one here, even though that's not going to do anything. That was just for looks. Because, see, that's the same cabinet. But it balanced everything out when I put the other knob there. On this one, I wanted a little bit of dimension. So, I used this stuff. Um, what's left? It's like a wallpapery kind of thing. And I gunked it on there. It says it's pre-pasted, which I'm sure it is, but it did not hold until I used the gunk. And the gunk was miraculous, so I brushed the back of it with gunk, put it on there, brushed the top of it. Once it was dry, I painted the whole thing sandstone, and then I went over it with just a little bit of linen to highlight, because that raised pattern is so, so pretty. Isn't this fabulous? I like it's it, It's awesome now. I know. And mm -hmm. again, you just prepped to start, and that's it, right? I prepped to start, gunked this on, painted everything. Uh -huh. Is it? No. Is it ready for it? Okay, let me do that. Let me second coat the top, and then um, I have another project I'm going to show you while the top dries. Okay. Let's not totally dry. It's a couple of times. Oh, look. Look how. Okay, it's dry. I've got to turn Is this not fabulous? How long has the video been on? And look, we're already drying on top here now. Of course, I do have a fabulous man behind me oscillating. You need to find a man that will oscillate for you. Okay, again, I am just getting the paint on there to start with, and then we'll smooth it out, and it'll self-level on this second coat really well. Make sure you speak up. I will, am, I not, am I not speaking up? Well, you're bleeding away. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, I'm just kind of, I'm in the zone. Okay. Tommy's dragging my, dragging my lamp all over the place. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a great example of overworking something. So let me show you. The other trick, if you're doing it, and just let it dry longer. I'm doing this for a video. Um, of course, who am I kidding? I'm also doing it because I'm incredibly impatient and immediate gratification, and I want the project to be done already, and now I like it, but I am speaking up. Um, I like the process. I enjoy the process, but I love seeing it when it's done. So a lot of times I do rush it when I shouldn't. So you, you should stop it. You should um, wait a little bit longer for it to dry, for video purposes, I have not, and see what will happen down here. If I keep going over this, I'll have that little spot, and it's going to be a pro Well, look, it all smoothed out. <laughs> Dang, this paint's good. So, <laughs> but that's another spot where I could have overworked. Um, and if you do that, just come back and touch it up. I actually did a piece yesterday where I did that, and I overworked it, and it actually got a little lumpy. So I just sanded that little spot and then repainted but this is phenomenal. Okay, so now we've got our second coat on, and he's going to oscillate. And while he oscillates, I have another really fast little project I'm going to show you so that you're not actually watching paint dry. So, all right, the see these? Done. The front done, the front stress. Oh, okay. Okay, look, there's that little spot that bothered me. Remember that spot that was annoying when we were going over and over? The one in the corner? Uh-huh. Now that we dry, you just come back in and touch that up. Okay, now it's not dry, Tom. Okay, so, so while while that's drying, see the little lights here? Look how cute. Yep, yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. sorry. Okay. I told you to be all over the place today. Fine. See how cute? Very cute, Mama. Aren't those fabulous? <laughs> They're glittery. It takes 30 seconds to do those. Let me show you how real quick. Um, it's not time. Well, I don't know how long most people plan. I guess we're coming up on planning weddings. Mason jars done this way would be really cute for wedding decorations, but they're really just cute all year round. They're just fun. So let me show you real quick what you do for those. Katie, come over here. Yes, ma'am. I, I didn't get that. Okay. All right. All we're going to do for this is you need a glass jar, any kind, and they are so easy to find at a thrift store. So, so easy. And the gunk. Okay. You're going to paint the inside of the jar. I do the bottom first. That gets it everywhere. 
Um, I tried pouring some in and rolling it around. Too much. Don't do that. <laughs> don't think that'll be a faster way. I'm just painting it on. I'm going to show you the whole thing when I'm done. On the furniture, can you do just one coat for the distressed look? We are um, working on the jars right now. I'll get back to the front. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. You can, uh, you can, no, you really need, I guess if you're happy with it after one coat. The problem is that first coat bonds to the furniture, and then the second coat kind of locks it on. So you sometimes don't have as much grippability, grippishness. A stickishness, whatever you want to call it, that second coat really seals it. Now, when we look back at my linen coat, I'm going to glaze and I'm going to distress. It's not going to look perfect. If I wasn't going to glaze or distress, I would probably want some more linen on there. So you can have a less perfect coat if you're going to glaze it, but you usually do want two coats. Um, unless you put, you know, if you're dealing, if you're dealing, especially if you're dealing with laminate, if you're doing raw wood or a real wood, and you have prepped really good, you can get by with one coat, but you'll want to seal it. You'll want to use the tough top or the flat top on top of that. Okay, so I got my jar all gunked up on the inside. And this is my glitter. And my the prettiest mix is silver glitter, iridescent glitter, and glass beads. That's what I have in here. Do a close-up. Isn't that so pretty? So pretty. It's so pretty. Okay? <laughs> Your, this you can pour in. So we're going to pour some in. Roll it around, and as I roll towards the top, it'll stick towards the lid. That's all I did. Then it dries, then I stuck those little teeny lights, the little battery-powered lights. Mine, um, we'll go back over there and I'll show you real quick, because it would be a pain in the neck to have to reach down in, and I guess if it's a centerpiece on the table, you're going to have to reach down in. Well, you'll probably only turn them on during the wedding or whatever so the batteries will last but mine I like to turn on if and on every day let me show you the inside see the inside mm -hmm. so that's all there is to that and then mine back yeah. here when I put the little lights in <laughs> did you get them again? I did not you oh. not in that side. Okay. I just have this one didn't even have a lid I just had a nest on top of it and the battery pack is behind it can you go around to the side and show the battery packs uh -huh. behind it and this one is the lid I painted the lid and then it's just on, but the little cord comes out anyway, and the battery pack's behind this one, too. So they're just sitting behind them, so I can turn them off and on. So, and this little bird was the same color as the iron. It's a, it's an iron, well, you can't see that it's, it's iron. Um, <laughs> this little bird is iron, but I didn't like the whole thing being brown, so I painted that and then sanded it with my electric sander. Um, so it had, so it popped a little bit. So you can paint just about anything. All right, so we're going back to this. I'm going to, is the top dry? Yeah. Back to the desk. Okay. Yep. And what I'm going to do real quick so you can keep drying it, I'm going to do this edge here, and I'm not going to tape it off. You do it Okay. Is everybody leaving? Is there, are you guys bored? Well, it's time for dinner. Tom's telling me to quit. Do I quit? Do I keep going? What's the consensus? Okay. Is there nobody even watching to tell me quit? <laughs> you got people watching. Okay. You don't have to do top coat for your paint, correct? You do not have to. We recommend doing one on a horizontal surface. That's where you're going to get the wear and tear. So we recommend like a desktop. I know I'm going to use this and drag my laptop across it and everything else. So I'm going to want um, a coat on this. Dining room tables, yes, definitely. But I'm not going to put any kind of sealer anywhere else on this. Um, I'm not going to put it on a headboard. I'm not going to put it on, you know, I've teased before that I'll put it on, um, I'll put one on Tom's nightstand. I don't need one on mine because I'm careful. I use a coaster. It's not a big deal. So if it's a, yeah, I am. Fans pointed at the bagel. Sorry. So if you're, if it's a horizontal surface, we say, yeah, go ahead. Um, and the flat top and the tough top are fabulous. And I'm hoping if um, people are still interested, we'll have time to throw a coat. They all say coat. keep going. Okay, I'll throw a coat on there um, on the top of this real quick. I can't even Once see your it's, hand, so. It's totally okay. It's the same thing I was doing everywhere else. I feel lost. It's a <laughs> All right. Okay. It doesn't matter if this line's real even because when I distress, it'll it'll make that. I didn't tape it off because it'll make a real crisp edging when I distress it. So are we ready to distress the cabinet now? Yep. All right. Distress it away. Here we go.
Okay. Let me stop and answer the questions. Ryobi Sander. Doesn't have to be cordless. I love my cordless one. The non-cordless ones are only 29 bucks. 80 grit sandpaper. If you're doing um, laminate um, or something like that, you might want to back off 80 grit and maybe use 100, 120. I'm a professional, so I'm using 80. Um, but <laughs> it's um, if the paint dries for a while, you want 80 to get it off there. This is laminate. We're doing it really quickly. As I distress, if I hit the wrong spot, I'm not going to stress because I can just go over it and paint it and fix it. So um, the cordless ones are 30 bucks. The non-cordless ones are 35, but you got to buy a battery, and the batteries are about 40. So if you're doing a lot of furniture, though, it's awesome. Stressed, but like I said, we did it pretty quick. The bottom of the piece is seaside. Do you have yes. to use prep or can you clean your furniture with something like Windex or white vinegar and water? Okay, we sell the prep. What am I going to say? Yes, you have to use the prep. Oh, oh, wait, sorry, wait. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, you have to use the prep. Um, the prep is a good idea. Vinegar and water will work. It's a good degreasing kind of product. What we tell people is there's a chance that's going to work for you. It probably you know, you're not probably not gonna have any problems because the paint's awesome. Prep is the insurance policy. If you call and say our paint's not sticking, our first very kind question is, did you prep? We can guarantee what's going on if you use all the steps in the system, but feel free to, you know, don't let that stop you from painting. So, um, but that was a good question. Okay, now when it dries, I can touch up the other little spots and it'll obviously it'll look better once it dries. But you know, some of that doesn't even bother me because it's supposed to be rustic anyway. So let me show you. Um, what we're doing here is this instead of that ugly thing. Remember the ugly thing that was on when we started? I remember, Mother. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> it's hard when they don't answer. Okay. I'm going right here. Because yeah, I've gone too long. I'm trying to hurry. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we got this at the bottom. What do you put on the paint once it dries to keep the paint from wearing off? Nothing here. On the top, I'll use Tough Top. And I'm hoping that it'll dry enough that I can put a coat of tough top on to show you how to apply that. The paint has sealer in it. Yeah, there is sealer in the paint. It's not going to wear off. And areas like this don't get a ton of wear. Um, it's this that gets the wear and tear. So that's what we're going to focus on. Okay. I like ribbons if things aren't standard. Three inches is a standard piece of hardware. If it's not standard, if it's two and a half, if it's three and a half, if it's five, it's whatever, then you're looking at a custom pool or you're paying a lot for it. I like ribbon. Obviously, if you're doing a man cave, that's not the answer, but we're not here. So, um, and the trick to doing the ribbon is I'll pull off about as much as I think I need. I know about how much it takes to do a bow. You'll get the, I mean, a, a knot, you'll get the feel for that. But pull all that off and cut it so you got one long piece. Tape one end because that'll get it through the holes. If you pull it through and cut it every time, you're going to be taping every time. So pull your long piece all the way through and your taped piece all the way through. Tom, can you grab me a pair of scissors? There's some on the wall over behind you. Do a square knot. Over. Oh. Oh, I just got a lot it. of scissors here. I do have a lot of scissors. Oh, you okay, and those of you who are freaking, I just scratched it because we started painting this how long ago? Remember Tom's lecture about dried versus cured? This is dry. It is not cured. Give it a day, two days, it will be fabulous. So I made a square knot. Okay, scissors. And now. Usually it looks best if you trim it right around where that hole is. Otherwise you have real long or real short. So I'm going to trim it about right there and about right here. And then what I was talking about, about where you've taped it, now I have this piece that still has tape on it. So if I've got another drawer, I don't have to retape. I can just pull it in, knot it, do it again. And I've got, I only had to tape it one time. So look how cute that is. Isn't that cute? All right. Can I distress the top you think? Fair enough? Okay.
Cole's in a convenient spot. I know. Okay. Before you tough talk. Oh, I love when the fan is off. Sorry. <laughs> Before you tough talk, you want to make sure you get all the sanding dust off. So I'm going to clean the piece off first. You're going to tough talk it right now? Uh huh, I am. Is that bad? Yes. Why is that bad? Because you're going to re wet it? Because on laminate, you need to let it cure before you okay. tough top it. All right, then I can tough top it. I would love to show you that. All right, but. Sorry, I don't mean to be full sport. No, actually, we can do a whole other time on Tough Top. And so, how long would you wait so I can tell them how long I would wait? I would give it a couple of hours to cure. Okay. What All happens right. is, That's just so they know, terrible. what happens is if you put Tough Top on it right now and it's not cured, the great thing about Tough Top is it completely seals the piece, which means that no moisture gets out, which means you have now ta taken something that would cure oh. in two hours and made it take three days to cure. He's right. If I put this over it now, the top is dry. The bottom is, the underneath coats are not totally cured. It'll dry because air can hit it. Once I seal it, then nothing can get to it, and um, it's going to take longer for it to dry. Okay, see, this is what I was talking about. If you look really closely here, if I'm glazing, that's fine. If this is from my office, can you see it, or does that need to hold a lot closer? Oh, uh, you can see parts of it, yeah. Okay. If, you look if it's closely. in my office, I'm fine with that. It's a rustic look. If, you, if you're if you going for perfection, if you're really stressed, whatever, you can put another coat on that. If you're glazing, don't worry about it because the glaze will totally cover that up. Um, and you can... Okay, so we're not going to tough top. Okay, we will tough top. We'll do a tough top in another, another tutorial. Plus Tom's whispering to me that everybody's... Wanting to go because it's taking way too long to do this video. Oh my god! So, Bring it fast. All right. So that's painting laminate. You see what we just did? Because when he started, none of that and the top wasn't done. Come over here, Katie, so you can see how fabulous it is. Um, you see how quickly we got just that little bit done, and that was with no dry time. And I was going to put this on here so it looked all cute, but just somebody something. wrapped it all up in the cord. Got tangled with the cord. Oh, not right. That okay. has. Let's say you can see it a little bit better too, okay? Way cute, way easy. Yes, you can paint laminate. It's amazing what the paint will go on and what it will stick to. After this cures, I'll put a coat of Tough Top on it. It'll be absolutely fabulous. And thank you for watching what turned out to be a little bit longer video than we usually do. If you're looking for a retailer, check out our website, www.rethongtopeyler.com. Look for a store locator, plug in your zip code. If you'd like to be a retailer, we would love that. In 2017, that's what we're going for. We'd like the paint to be everywhere and very easy to access because it's so easy and so much fun to use. Thank you for watching. Happy rethunking.